Di Canio, people kind of brand him madcap and whatever else. He won the league last year, uh, 93 points, uh, five points clear of Shrewsbury. Uh, they were in turn four, put third, three points clear. I think it was Crawley in third. Yes. He knows what he's doing, doesn't he? Well, he's in the right, and, and we wouldn't even have had a story, even though he took the keeper off, if the keeper didn't um, have a paddy, if you like, or have a little tantrum. And, and the bottom line is, the manager is always right mm. when about making a decision. Now, whether that ends up being right or wrong, then that's up to the manager to maybe come out and say, I got it wrong. Mm. But as far as anyone's concerned, the manager makes a decision, then you, you, you're in it together. There's 16 of you on a Saturday that could be needed at any, t any yeah, stage. It's a statement. It's a statement from the manager. He talked about psychological tools, didn't we, in the, in the last segment. This is one of those. He's probably sensed that the goalkeeper got a bit too comfortable. Mm. Perhaps he thinks you know he doesn't have to work as hard on his game. He's very driven, Paolo De Canio. If there's one thing I would say about him, he is so passionate and so driven to succeed. He expects the same. St he expects high standards of his players. Mm. And if that goalkeeper Fodderingham didn't meet those standards, and he has got the right to take him off, it's embarrassing. Mm. And I can, I can, I feel the goalie's pain. Yeah. It's humiliating. But you can't go and sit, sit in the stand with the fans and, and throw your toys out the pram. You're disrespecting the substitute goalkeeper that's come on in the first place. Yeah, absolutely. Good point. He does like to push himself, Paolo Di Canio. He does like to push other people as well. We all know about Paul Orcock all those years ago. One man who saw that at close range was Nigel Winterburn. Very pleased to have him on the show. Uh, welcome to the show, uh, Nigel. Yeah, good evening, chap. Oh, good good evening. evening. I've got Flash Gordon Watson and I've got Adrian Clark in the studio with me. You've spoken to them both before. First of all, your reaction to what you saw from Paolo Di Canio on Saturday? Well, it, it doesn't surprise me. I don't think Paolo did anything wrong, to be quite honest with you. He made the decision. Um, uh, you know, uh, uh, people were probably surprised. It's only, what was it, less than 20 minutes into a game. But he's made the decision that, that he, you know, he thinks the goalkeeper's not performing to his standards. So he makes that he makes that change. So that doesn't surprise me. And also, the goalkeeper's reactions is, is wrong. Um, but in the heat of the moment, I can fully understand because it's humiliating for a player to be brought off that early. And uh, so I understand his reactions. But he's, he's made that apology, and I would think that the, the manager Paolo and the goalkeeper will will move on very very quickly. Nigel, do you uh, do you liken it to like if um, your old boss George Graham? sent righty on, and then five minutes later brought him back off again? Well, actually, I was, um, when I was sub on my debut, I think it was South, I think Southampton at home, uh, George Graham sent on Niall Quinn. You're trying to remember now, aren't you? No, we've lost we've him. We've lost him for a second. We'll get him back. Yeah. Just getting into a really good story. We've got some great stories this evening. We will get him back, don't worry. Uh, but I would imagine there have been lots of cases. You were telling me a few during the break, but there have been cases where managers do something unorthodox like that. And, and it's almost a message you're sending out to the players that, you know, I will do whatever it takes yeah, and it's, to stay in charge. Yeah, it comes from a position of strength because Swindon are a club on the rise. They were champions last year, as you explained, and they've had a very good start to the season. Mm -hmm. He does not want complacency. Mm. He knows there are loads of goalkeepers in the around the country, number twos, number mm. threes, that w would love to play in that Swindon mm. first team. So he's saying to Fodderingham, your standards have got, got to be better. Yeah, absolutely. Well, we're keeping a high standard here by getting Nigel back on the show. Uh, Nigel just dropped out for a second, just as he was about to tell us a juicy story. Nigel? Yeah, I was just saying that, um, you know, I was um, uh, in my early career at Arsenal under George Graham. I was sub for a game against Southampton. Noel Quinn was sub as well. Noel Quinn went on as a substitute in the second half and George Graham subbed him and I came on in place of him. And, uh, you know, coming on as well for a player that's been brought on as sub and then been subbed is quite, is quite embarrassing in, in itself. So I can see the frustration of, of the... You know, I understand the frustration of the goalkeeper. But as you say, I, you know, I played uh, with Paolo Di Canio at, at West Ham you know, he's very, very driven. He's very focused. He doesn't like any messing around, in, even in training. So, you know, I've seen him, you know, blow a gasket in training and walk off and refuse to train because the play, he thinks the players are messing around and not meeting his high standards. And then he'll come back in the next day. You know, everyone lets him cool off and he'll train as if nothing's happened. But, you know, he's, he's, he's a very, very motivated, or was a very, very motivated player. And you don't lose that as a manager. So I, I can understand that he's got a decision to make. He's been very, very successful with the club. He's at Swindon. And he made that decision. 
goalkeeper, unfortunately, is a little bit embarrassed, but has yeah. to get on with it. Nigel, as you say, you, you know Paolo's character very, very well. Um, do you see him as a possibly a future Premier League manager? And could he realistically get away with these kind of uh, scenes? Because we've had one or two scenes from him in, in, in the last couple of seasons at that level. Well, it's, you know, I think as you move up um, through the levels as a manager, I think you have the respect of the, the players as well. You, you wouldn't do, I think because of where Paolo's been as a player and he drops down through the leagues as, as a manager, then he knows that none of those players are anywhere near as good as what he was. When you start to move up through the leagues and into the Premier League, I think Paolo would, if he got to that level, would respect those players. Um, I, I, I'm not sure if he didn't feel someone was pulling their weight in a game, I still would think that he would take them off because that's the way he is. But I think he might, you know, he might deal with players slightly differently. But he's a very, very passionate guy. And you no, have to accept that. You have to meet his standards. Nigel, I think that's where the really rolled in the most, wasn't it? He was saying, we're not talking about a premiership goalkeeper here. We're talking about a player who's 20, 21 year old playing in League One, or for all intents and purposes, Division Three. So for him to then have a tantrum like that and, and being happy that I'm Paolo Di Canio mm. and I'm picking you as my goalkeeper should be enough. Yeah, well, it, it sort of summed the goalkeeper's day up, didn't it? Because he sliced the water bottle as well, you know. Yeah, <laughs> 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 uh, but no, you got. To, uh, listen, you have to you have to respect the manager. Sometimes we all know that in a split second we lose it, and then the red mist comes down for another twenty seconds, and all of a sudden we we gain control, and afterwards you go, "Oh my God, what have I done that for?" You know, I'm completely wrong. I've done it myself on two or three occasions. You look back, and, you know, I regret some of the incidents I was involved in, but. You have to live with them, you, you, you move on. And I think that's what Paolo's saying, you know. He's saying, you know, I've played at the highest level. You know, I'm now a manager. I think I understand what I'm doing. If I decide you're not having a good game, you're coming off. You know, and uh, we'll, you know, if you're not happy with it, talk to me after in the dressing room or the next day at the, at the training ground, you know. Don't make yourself look bad. And I think that's what the goalkeeper did there. He, he, you know, he made himself look, look bad by... One, you know, his frustrations boiled over, um, you know, kicked the water bottle. He turned around, he had a rant at Paolo and then cleared off. But Nigel, um, I'm, so sure, many, I'm so, sure it'll be fine in a couple of days. Nigel, so many questions I want to ask. I want to squeeze a couple in because uh, you obviously, everyone remembers that, that Paul Orcott moment and you were playing for Arsenal at the time. And, and uh, you must have seen a very different side to the side you've just described to us, the side where you've trained alongside him and his standards are higher. Did your opinion of him change from the time you were playing for Arsenal to the time you played alongside him at West Ham? No, I don't think so. I, uh, you know, even when I played against Paolo, um, I think we, I, I knew, you know, you knew the ability that he had. Um, I think, but then when you go and train with somebody and play with somebody, I think it became very, very clear very quickly. We had great re uh, an understanding and respect for each other because we trained and played the same way. We gave everything in training. We gave, you know, 100% in, in the games. And uh, it, doesn't, it doesn't surprise me that, um, you know, that's the way Paolo is. What you do get when you start to train with somebody and play with them, rather than just watching them and knowing they're a good player, you get to see how good they are. And that's the important thing. You know, I, you know, I could see the ability firsthand then when Paolo was playing. Mm. Um, and saw some of his tantrums as well first hand when he did think <laughs> that uh, people understood what he, what he was supposed to be doing. Uh, Nigel, last question. Um, we were talking about respect uh, and managers, the, the way they earn it, but also the, the, the anger that sometimes uh, managers experience uh, during matches. And I, we were talking during the break about the 6 1, Arsenal 6, sorry, Arsenal 1, Manchester United 6. And Arsene Wenger, the tales are that during that match he had a really explosive episode, shall we say. Were you playing in that match, first of all? Uh, no, I wasn't. No, that was. Um... That was um, after I'd left, I'm pleased to say. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but what would George Graham have been like? Yeah, exactly. Well, I mean, you know, George was a completely different character to Arsene Wenger. You know, it was as if George was, I'm the manager and, and, you know, you really only approach me when I ask you to. He, he kept his distance, if you like, away from the players. He, he organised the team fabulously well. Listen, George fell out with many, many a player 
and players fell out with, with George. But the problem is is that where you were where, with, when George Graham was manager at Arsenal, he had control because of the wage situation and he knew you needed to play. Whereas now you've got a, you know, you've got a role reversal where players can fall out with managers and they can just sit there for a fair p- amount of time and they can almost dictate to a manager when they move or, or whether they stay. But you know, George has George has lost uh, lost his temper many many times. But players, have, you know, you'll ask George have, have also come back at him as well. But you never win against the manager because you either get dropped, you get sold, or you have to apologise. The, the 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 instinctive question I want to ask I want to ask you two actually. I'm producer screaming in my ear, so I've got to ask you one. Uh, actually, I'm going to ask squeeze one more in because uh, Arsene Wenger. Did you ever see him get angry, Nigel? Never, never, never ever. Played. No, he didn't need to get he didn't need to get angry, did he? When we played, we used, to, we used to win things. No, <laughs> I, no, to be quite honest with you guys, I've never seen him got, get angry. But I have been told that uh, over the last few years he has got angry, he has been agitated by his teams. I think because he's had a genuine belief that his team is good enough to win things. Mm. And when they drop below the high standards that he expects them to set themselves, then uh, I think occasionally he has let the players know that. Uh, you know, they're playing for Arsenal Football Club and, and they're letting themselves down. So when I was there, no, I didn't see it. And I've even saw where Pat Rice started to have a go as it, in one game at half-time and Arsenal Wenger told him to be quiet, told him to shut up oh. and leave the players alone. Well, you don't get that very often. <laughs> but, um, you know, maybe things are changing with, with Arsenal Wenger. Absolutely. We're still looking forward to getting you in on the panel here on the show, Nigel. Always appreciate your comments, and the viewers do love uh, listening to your views as well. Really appreciate you coming on this evening. No problem. Thanks very much, guys. Embarrassing. Mm. And I, can, I, can, I feel the goalie's pain. Yeah. It's humiliating. But you can't go and sit, sit in the stand with the fans and, and throw your toys out the pram. You're disrespecting the substitute goalkeeper that's come on in the first place. Yeah, absolutely. Good point. He does like to push himself, Paolo Di Canio. He does like to push other people as well. We all know about Paul Orcock. Perhaps he thinks you know he doesn't have to work as hard on his game. He's very driven, Paolo Di Canio. If there's one thing I would say about him, he is so passionate and so driven to succeed. He expects the same. St- he expects high standards of his players, mm. and if that goalkeeper Fodderingham didn't meet those standards, and he has got the right to take him off, it's in. Imba- De Canio, people kind of brand him madcap and whatever else. He won the league last year, at 93 points, uh, five points clear of Shrewsbury. Uh, they were in turn four, put third, three points clear. I think it was Crawley in third. Mm. He knows what he's doing, doesn't he? Well, he's in the right, and, and we wouldn't even have had a story, even though he took the keeper off, if the keeper didn't. Um have a paddy, if you like, or have a little tantrum. And, and the bottom line is, the manager is always right mm. when about making a decision. Now, whether that ends up being right or wrong, then that's up to the manager to maybe come out and say, I got it wrong. Mm. But as far as anyone's concerned, the manager makes a decision, then you, you, you're you in it together. There's 16 of you mm. on a Saturday that could be needed at any, t- any yeah, stage. It's a statement. It's a statement from the manager. We talked about psychological tools, didn't we, in the, in the last segment. This is one of those. He's probably sensed that the goalkeeper's got a bit too comfortable. Mm. 